Okay, I think we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, just to let you know, I'm Aaron Essery, Vice Chair, filling in for the Chairman Ralph Langenheim. He's not here tonight. So, would ask the Recording Secretary to please call um, the roll. Schrader. Uh, here. Esri. Here. Berkson. <coughs> Harper. Kurtz. Here. Petrie. Here. Langenheim. The quorum is present. Thank you. Uh, move on to approval of the minutes for the ELEC committee meeting um, from June 6, 2013. Moved by Mr. Second. Kurtz, seconded by Mr. Schrader. Any discussion? On the minutes, seeing none, all in favor, aye. aye, all opposed, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, move on to item four, approval of agenda and addenda. Moved by Ms. Petrie to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schrader. Is there any... Any discussion on the agenda? Yes, Ms. Petrie. I'm assuming uh, that we will uh, not be paying any attention to Roman numeral 10. Is that correct? We haven't pulled it. It is for information only. Um, I don't see a problem leaving it on there. The discussion should be brief, I would think, since it's but been pulled. Well, it's been pulled for now, it would be my understanding, but not, that's not to say it couldn't be brought back up at a later date, so why not? we reserve discussion in it, so it's contiguous. Well, I know I've already had one of the other board members, um, Mr. Max Mitchell, discuss that he would like to see us come out and fa opposed to it already, so that when and if it already comes up, if it comes up again, we're already on record as being opposed. I mean, that was just one fellow board member's. Any other discussion on the agenda? And if seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Okay, we're on to public participation. Um, again, we have the rules state that we have a um, five minute limit. Um, and would ask that you would please step forward and say your name and where you're from. Um, for the record, please. And we'll get started with that. And first up, we have Mr. Alan Singleton, which he's out of the room right now. Uh, I guess we'll move on to Mr. Larry Hall, please. And it, if you would, please, first person, push the button at the front on the microphone, or we've got it covered. Thanks. button I assume oh I'm good good to go okay Larry Hall uh, reside at uh, 177 County Road 1600e at Villa Grove adjacent to the property in question on resolution 8504 denying a petition to amend zoning ordinance to rec reclassify a certain property speaking for myself my wife and with the signed support of substantial majority of the neighbors we continue to emphatically state our opposition to the proposed zoning changes and to the introduction of an RLA into our neighborhood. Four years ago, when my wife and I married, we were faced with a decision. I lived in Decatur. She lived at the address at Villa Grove. I was from a farm background originally, and a few years back had lived with my backyard abutting the Macon County Conservation District. I knew there that that conservation ground was, was almost sacred. Julie informed me that her property and the surrounding property on the west side of the highway was zoned conservation recreation. That we thought gave us assurance and comfort that it would always be protected. 
And with this information, the decision was easy. We chose to reside and plan our retirement where we now live. But suddenly, the peace, serenity, our safety, and the stability of our property value have all been threatened. We pretty much said all we know to say and provided the evidence to support our concerns and opposition. All of this has been heard and scrutinized by the ZBA for the past two years. Repeatedly, the petitioner's attorney has stated the property which they seek to rezone is surrounded by agriculture. May I stand as close as we are here? To the south, there is farm ground, but it is zone CR. And that's what this picture here is. I think you can all see. I'm sorry. And I know this image is coming up over here. Okay. This right here? It's a sky It's a sketch. You guys just look it up. Zone conservation recreation. The farm ground is farmed to the, to the south. It's not zoned ag one. This is farm one conservation. This is zone conservation. The end of the runway butts up to Highway 130. This little area right here. You have 130 if you buy it. And then all this over here, bag one, for the farm also. So it's not surrounded by ag zone property. Surrounded by conservation property, some of which is farm. I'd like to show you another picture to emphasize the closeness of our property. I know that you're standing surprised at the realization of that. There's a picture to emphasize the closeness of the proposed RLA to our property map. You can see the most property there, which indicates the RLA, you see a driveway, and you see our house. A little over 100 feet. A little over 100 feet. Not financial offers, nor intimidation, nor bullying, have lessened our opposition to the removal of surrounding land from the protection of conservation recreation zoning nor lessened our opposition to the imposition of an RLA next to our house. Thank you, and please uphold the decision of the ZBA to deny it all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll um, go back to Mr. Singleton, who was out of the room talking with Mr. Fletcher. We started. Do we have a five minute? Yes. Okay. Last time I went over, I'm gonna time myself today, so. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you and thank you to each of the board members and staff members who have been through this long process and uh, we appreciate uh, you listening to this and serving. Um, we, we've heard some uh, things in opposition. Um, the, uh, I guess the, 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 the thing that uh, happens or you should consider with respect to the neighbors who, and folks from outside of the area who signed that initial petition is that it was signed prior to the time that uh, the special conditions were proposed. Uh, and you'll find in, our, in the packet that I passed out tonight, uh, a number of special conditions that limit the effect of the RLA uh, or the proposed RLA that would account, accompany this rezoning on the neighbors, including frequent limit, very strict limits on frequency of flight uh, for both the helicopter uh, and, the, uh, and the airplane, uh, so that uh, no more than two takeoffs and two landings in any 28-day period for the helicopter, and uh, no more than three landings and takeoffs in any 28-day period for the um, 
fixed aircraft. And there are, on page 12, there are a whole host of limitations and protections that are built into this process. Uh, the, the limitations and protections are intended to mitigate the effects on the neighbors. I understand that it's their position that they will not completely mitigate the effects, but uh, certainly they're in there for a reason. Uh, I think uh, if, if the folks that were uh, approached initially on this uh, were, were shown all of these uh, limitations, I believe that they might come up with a different uh, take on it. Right now, the board sort of has a strategic decision. Uh, we have sort of a compromise, which is spelled forth on page 12, which puts into effect a lot of, uh, a lot of protections for the neighbors. Um, at the time the ZBA made its decision, the Gertis case had not been decided. Uh, the Gertis case changes the landscape a bit, uh, at least in my mind. I think it gives us an opportunity to go in with uh, a specifically narrow court case and uh, get an exemption from zoning and go to IDOT and get approved without, and then we wouldn't have all these protections in place. So uh, you have an opportunity to go ahead and approve the rezoning uh, and then the case would go back to the ZBA. Hopefully we'd get approval then. There'd still be some protections in place for the neighbors. If we go to court and get an exemption from zoning based upon ag, uh, it would be a little bit more narrow in some respects perhaps, but it would be, uh, it would lack these protections. Uh, I know tractors operate at night. Uh, there's no limit on the path, number of passes that a tractor or a combine can make in a field. All those types of things would not be in place. So I guess, you know, be, be careful what you wish for sometimes. Uh, and uh, I think the special conditions uh, offer a relevant or a, a, a reasonable compromise to the situation. Um, the, uh, I guess keep things in perspective as well. Uh, as we think about, you know, three takeoffs and landings uh, for a certain aircraft, uh, consider the number of passes uh, for a motor vehicle. Route 130, 1.2 million vehicles pass on Route 130, and Route 130 is closer to petitioner to uh, Mr. Hall's house than uh, this proposed RLA would be. 1.2 million vehicle passes. Uh, some of the semis there are 80,000 pounds. For scale, this is the weight of Mr. Jones' aircraft. That's the weight of a semi that can go on Route 130, all right? Perspective, 1.2 million versus about 150 passes for, for aircraft and relative weight, 80,000 versus a few thousand for Mr. Jones aircraft. So I guess just keep it in perspective. There's also been issues of conservation brought up. Uh, no trees are gonna have to be cut at all for the runway. Uh, some trees would need to be cut for the hangar, uh, but Dr. Jones has agreed to replace that with one acre of forested land. Uh, developed in consultation with somebody uh, suggested by plan staff. And uh, the, the trees that are gonna be cut, this came off one of them, so. You know, it's not exactly what I would call old growth quality forest. This is a, this is a locust <laughs> for anybody that hasn't seen it. So uh, thank you for your time uh, and appreciate your consideration. Okay, thank you. Uh, next move to Gene Fisher. Uh, I'm Jean Fisher, 195 County Road, 1600 East. Um, I've spoke uh, to you folks before to ELUC. Um, I just wanted to mention again that uh, my family ha has, is, currently resides uh, in the main farmstead that comprised uh, 70 area, 70, about 70 acres in this conservation district. It's a beautiful conservation district. And uh, again, um, as I mentioned, um, the founding fathers of Champaign County wanted the conservation district to remain intact. And that's why they 
put certain protections in place. 1% of Champaign County is in the conservation district. Um, and the 32 households that signed the petition, of those households, they signed that petition uh, because they wanted to protect the conservation district. Um, regardless of any special conditions that were made before, after, during, they do not want an RLA in their area. They feel that will it will uh, significantly impact the conservation district. And the zoning board on the finding of facts and the summaries of evidence determined that, um, that it was a significant impact. Um, if I can show this to you here. Um, when Mr. Hall showed you the particular properties here that were in the PRA, which was everything here, the PRA, this yellow box is A, this yellow box is A, this is the river that flows through there, and that's where the trees are, are trying to mature and grow. Um, up by the We selected our house to be in the conservation area. And just as anybody else purchases a house, uh, they should know the proper zoning in which they seek. Um, the particular RLA it was stated um, as evidenced of the zoning board hearings that it would be for personal use. Okay, the, the petitioner can already do the uses that he's currently doing on that property. He can grow hay if he wants to. He can place it in farm ground. Um, but the RLA is not an allowable use in conservation area. And the reason for that being is because the concentration of houses in the conservation area is more dense. In Ag 1, you have spread out areas of, of plots. And so the, the safety factor is decreased in Ag 1. Um, so I wanted to address that. Um, also, uh, Mr. Singleton mentioned the trees, um, that there would be minimal tree impact, that they would plant some trees. That was all part of the zoning board's findings that, um, again, it was a significant impact. Um, zoning board and uh, the, the, prior, the prior vote for, with the ELA committee had basically uh, were in agreement um, that it would be a significant impact. Uh, trees will encroach into the runway area. And actually, there are trees that are on a, the back property that is a different property than owned by the petitioner. So he has no control over how big those trees can grow and how they are managed. So again, that was another safety issue that was brought up in the zoning board hearings. Um, uh, so those are a few things that I, that I wanted to highlight. Um, the finding of fact and the summary of evidence um, was very uh, uh, was very solid. Uh, we feel that that the zoning board, a very again a very trusting board to rely upon, uh, made that determination. And I would like um, the ELUC committee to adopt the resolution 8504. I would like to recommend that, um, that uh, you side with uh, the ZBA and um, approve the denial of uh, the RLA. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next we have Julia Hall. Hi, my name is Julia 
Wright Hall, and I live at, and I have lived at 177 North County Road, 1600 East in Champaign County since June of 2004. And since our marriage in 2009, I reside there with my husband, Larry Hall. The Jones property in, uh, in case 687 AM 11 that has been denied rezoning adjoins and runs parallel to our front, side, and backyards. We agree with the Zoning Board of Appeals that the property bordering our home, specifically the property mentioned in case 687 AM 11, should not be changed from conservation recreation to Ag 1. We also agree with the Zoning Board to deny the restricted landing area special permit, specifically case 688 S 11. We submitted a letter to the ZBA from a reputable real estate agent who said that the wall of dirt that Dr. Jones constructed, <coughs> along with the weeds and the trees that he has planted around the properties in the E.E. E. Rogers subdivision, have already caused a decrease in marketability and value, and that rezoning, and especially an RLA, would further depreciate our property, especially since the proposed RLA would have been approximately 100 feet away from the edge of our property and about 140 feet away from the, our home. The sole purpose of the request to rezone this acreage in the middle of the conservation area was to allow the Jones family to construct and operate a restricted landing area for their personal use. The petitioner stated during ZBA meetings that flying is his hobby and that he buys and sells planes. At the time of his original petition, he and his family owned five planes, five, five aircraft. Who knows what could be landing next to us if this RLA ever gets approved. I want to point out that most of the petitioner's land is in Douglas County, not Champaign County. If the RLA goes forth as the petitioner desires, no crops can be planted on this 15 acres because the grass must be kept mowed at a, at a height of only about three inches. The runway has to be mowed and you cannot bale three inches of grass. Rezoning this property for the personal convenience of one family will be to the detriment of 32 families who signed a petition stating that they did not want the property rezoned and they did not want an RLA in their area, regardless of any stipulations. Almost everyone in the general vicinity of the Jones property signed this petition. The people who did not sign it were either relatives or had business dealings with Dr. and or Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. And as you know, and has been stated previously, only 1% of Champaign County is in conservation recreation. We are rapidly losing this valuable natural resource. The zoning board voted to deny this map amendment in a five to one vote. The only dissenting vote was from a fellow pilot. Previously, the U -ELUC, the ELUC committee voted to deny this map amendment in a five to two vote. I ask that you please uphold those, those votes and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Mark Fisher. Good evening. Mark Fisher, I live at the 195 County Road, 1600 East in Villa Grove, Illinois. I wanted to first apologize for my phone going off, but it was my mother, so I hope that's okay with you guys. <clears throat> first, I wanted to thank you guys for your service. When this whole process started, I had no idea how much time you guys spent. I don't know how you guys even have a life, uh, but I wanted to say that I'm very proud to have you as um, a representative of uh, Champaign County, and I'm, I'm proud of you. I wasn't really gonna say anything tonight, but I was looking at this handout <clears throat> that was just turned in apparently today. And something caught my eye on, um, on page three that Alan turned in. Uh, the goal three of prosperity, it said the proposed amendment will help achieve the goal by allowing full agricultural use of the subject property. 
And a little bell went off in my head um, close to the end of the ZBA meetings. <clears throat> Catherine Capel made a statement that stuck in my head, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly what she said. But it went something to the effect of allowing a map amendment for a piece of property in a conservation area opens the door for future uses not compatible with the surrounding conservation area. And that full agricultural use struck me. Um, and that just kind of went off in my head, and I thought I'd like to say that. Um, I will state along with my wife, we both purchased our property because it was zoned conservation. We chose our property for the conservation setting. <clears throat> and since conservation is a tiny 1% of the entire county, we felt our conservation setting was secure. We invested in our property. And we are depending on the county zoning fathers who made a conservation to keep a conservation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have, and I'm going to probably not say your last name right, Elitsa Dimitrova via? Prova? Sorry about that. Good evening. My name is Elitsa Dimitrova, and I reside at um, 1901 North Lincoln Avenue in Urbana. I just wanted to <clears throat> point out to you that um, based on the records, on the record before the ZBA, and the proceedings before the CBA, um, and following the example of uh, the zoning administration, we have prepared this packet for you, which um, is uh, which states the way um, our clients see the case, uh, Dr. Jones see the case, and um, constitutes a roadmap for you to adopt easily tonight. Should you decide to um, allow this uh, zoning amendment to happen, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and finally, the last name I have, um, Mr. Darren Wright. Darren Wright, I live inside Villa Grove, 405 North Pine. Um, I want to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I wasn't going to speak if uh, everyone covered all the to uh, topics that I had, but one thing struck my mind was I was one of the people that signed the petition prior to knowing about these new uh, special conditions. But in my mind and in my opinion, uh, limiting the number of takeoffs and landings does not, in my mind, uh, lessen the impact on the environment or the wildlife in that area. Um, and another thing that comes to mind, it's, it's, it, to me, it's just not safe. I, I, I may be speaking, I'm a layman here, but it's just not safe. Having a plane land that close to trees, uh, people's houses, um, the large plane that went down in the Hudson River was caused by geese flying into the engines, and that was a big plane. There's all sorts of wildlife that fly up from those trees around there. We don't want to impact the wildlife in that area. It's disappearing as it is. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all the names that I have. Is there anyone else wishing to participate, make a statement? Uh, seeing none, then we will close public participation and move on to communications. Any Mr. Just that I was informed that uh, Mr. Langenheim, obviously, and <clears throat> Mr. Harper will not be attending our meeting. They did call in and excuse themselves tonight. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Uh, any other communications? Uh, seeing none, we will move on then to items to be approved for a recommendation to the county board and start with letter A, the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission County Planning Contract Proposal for fis Fiscal Year 2014, and we have Susan Chavaria with us. And we'll turn it over to her for, yep. yes, I'm sorry. 
you're correct. I'd like to make a motion to have this on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. First, we have a first. Second. Second to Astrid. That's fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a couple months ago, we provided, uh, Champaign County Regional Planning Commission provided you with a proposal for technical planning services. Um, this is something that we have done for many years and have, have worked with the county in uh, trying to forward the policies and principles that, that it has approved and adopted over the years. And so this proposal in June included about 1,300, a little over in hours that we can help uh, supplement the county's efforts in, in forwarding planning services and, and, it's, and it's especially toward improving land use decision making uh, over the next year. So since then, uh, my office has not received any comments from anyone on the county board regarding our proposal, but we are more than happy to, to discuss anything you'd like this evening. Okay, is there any discussion? Ms. Petrie. Good evening, Susan. Um, I want to lay out a caveat before I make my comments. Uh, and my caveat is my comments do not pertain to the quality of staff. Thank you. Or anything of that nature. The foundation of my comments is consistency. This is the third year a contract has come up and a third year that I find I cannot support it. And the reasons I cannot support it. This time I drew a Venn diagram and an organizational structure diagram. And having this separation of long range planning over an RPC and planning and zoning over in county, and now GIS is over in the county, is the antithesis of best practice of urban planning. The siloing of planning does not produce the best of all planning. And I am very troubled about it. I mentioned it three contracts ago. I mentioned it two contracts ago. I'm going to continue to mention it. And now that GIS is over in the county, to me, the best thing for us to do is step back and have some conversations of how all the planning can be put together and put under the, the county. And as I read this contract, one of the parts of it is researching grants for different projects for the county. I am still carrying a major disappointment in the fact that Nobody stepped up and went for grant money when the ARRA money was available to do the stormwater management. That was a huge loss of money for the county that should not have been happening. And the county was the only entity within the whole county that didn't get ARRA money. So to me, that's a real sign that the separation of these activities is not working in the gestalt and for the benefit of the county. So I will continue to not support this kind of contract arrangement, and I really urge us to step back and start having some conversations on how to pull it together. And again, I underline my caveat. It has nothing to do with staff. Any other discussion? Mr. Schrader. Well, I'm going to support it because I wanted to go to a full county board because I think that's where we probably should have a lengthy discussion. And <clears throat> there, there's some things on here that um, I, I, I think we keep seeing reoccurring. And, and usually when we set up the budget for our contract with RPC. There's usually projects that are unforeseen that get um, get thrown on the front burner, and some other projects. And I, I know, like I said, there's projects on here that's been on there that's been thrown back because we've had things pop up where we've needed RPC's help, or at least the planning side of RPC, and and so I 
I'm going to support tonight. Um, like I said, I think we need to have a full board discussion about this. I don't think we need a special study session, but I think the board needs to contribute and have input with this also. Mr. Kurtz. Thank you. Uh, I agree with John. Uh, this We're only five of us here. This is a, a very big issue. It's always come before the entire board, and I'll support it so that we can have this discussion. Um, I also feel that it's, it's important that uh, we work with the RPC in planning on the LRMP and uh, other issues. Um, so from what I can tell, I would like to see, you know, if there are any caveats and you have some, well, you've already expressed what your concerns are, Patsy, but I would hope that other board members who read the packet give the direction to Ms. Uh, Monty here and because not, Susan Chavaria, I'm sorry. Uh, is Ms. Monty behind her? Yes, no, okay. Uh, so, uh, so that, I mean, there hasn't been one comment. Not one comment from any of the board members uh, concerning any of these plans. Uh, I would like to see, before we get to a discussion period and spend five hours on having people bring up all of their concerns at the night of the meeting, give Susan a chance to respond, to give us a chance to look at some of the concerns and move forward on it or not. But... I, as Patsy, sometimes you know, we get we get a drop on our desk. Sometimes, you know, at the moment we have to make some decisions or discuss it. So I think that some of this board should look at the packet and advise Susan and and the chair on if they have some uh, some concerns, individual concerns or concerns about the whole process. But it always seems to be that we we bring those up at the last second and. Susan doesn't really have a chance to respond in a, in a, in a way that would be uh, educational to us to see what their reasoning was for putting this on the schedule. So I'm going to vote for it, get it into the board, but I'm, I'm, I'm just asking that the, the board's uh, members give her some direction uh, at, to their concerns if they do have concerns. Ms. Burton. Microphone. I have a certain amount of agreement with Patsy. We give them the money, and then they think the money problems are done, and that's it, and let's get on with the planning. I think going for contracts is very, very important, and I think the RPC should put that on a front burner. Uh, there's a lot of money floating around there besides ours, and I'd like to see us get some of it. And any other discussion? I see Ms. Petrie. Uh, Mr. Petrie gave us one. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I didn't turn in comments because I knew I was not supportive of it. And actually, from one fellow planner to another planner, I would think one of the things that uh, might be useful for you to bring to the board is a way to um, amalgamate these two uh, functions of planning. And we both know that this is a good practice, and it seems a shame that uh, this continues. This contract is less expensive than last year. It was 70,000 last year. I thought it was 50 this year. It's 73. 73, okay, same. Well, I made the argument last year at 73, we can hire a planner, have some left over, and get some interns, and we could expand the planning, and it could be done in a unified way. So one of the things, this is one of the reasons I don't like the, the committee structure, because I do agree it should be up before the whole board, and listen to the whole board's comments on this. So this few people making a decision to stop something from going to the whole board is not best practice for county business. But second, um, I would urge you strongly, since you're looking for suggestions, uh, to come forward with 
some organizational structure to pull these together. And it might not happen the first year, but moving forward so that in two or three years, this is done. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none then, uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, move on to item B, case 760-V-13, recommendation to approve a variance to zoning ordinance for Sangamon Valley Public Water District. So moved. Moved by Mr. Schrader, seconded by Mr. Kurtz. Uh, discussion? Mr. Kurtz. I am assured and we will never see the Sangamon Water Valley <laughs> issue before us ever again, or at least until I'm off this board. <laughs> That's a safe one. Okay, thank you very much. And um, I'm hoping we pass this. This is the last variance. All this is is for to put a building permit for a, an additional shed on the same on their property. So uh, let us approve this and move on. Let them take care of their constituents out there, let that expansion take place, and let's move on, please. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Ms. Petrie. Yes, again, for the record, and my promise to my learned colleagues from Muhammad, uh, I will support this, but if the Hatfields and McCoys cannot get together, and one more thing from this water district comes before the county board, on the public record, I guarantee I will not support it, no matter how much you ask me. Any further discussion? Mr. Jay. Just for the record, Mrs. Petrie, this isn't the Hat Hatfields and the McCoys out there arguing. And you don't have a very good grasp of what's really going on. So if you will come out there, Mr. Maxwell and I will show you what's actually going on, and you can get rid of this Hatfield-McCoy theory of yours. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none then, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Mm, motion carries. Thank you. Move on to item C. Notice of intent from 3114 to 22919 for National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, Storm Water Discharge Permit with IEPA. Move for approval. Move by Mr. Schrader. Second, Second by Ms. Berkson. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, move on to number eight. Items to receive and place on file by ELUC to allow for 30 day review period. We have one part here, case 757-AT-13. Amend zoning ordinance as follows. Um, adopting updated flood insurance study adopting updated digital flood insurance rate maps, and adopting a new special flood hazard areas ordinance. Motion to receive and place on file. Mr. Schrader, seconded by Mr. Kurtz. Discussion. <laughs> Seeing none. Seeing <laughs> 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 Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, move on to item nine. Item on remand from the county board for reconsideration. Resolution number 8504, denying the petition to amend the zoning ordinance by reclassifying certain property 
Case 687-AM-11. Move the resolution. Moved by Mr. Schrader. Seconded by Ms. Berkson. Discussion. Looks like we must all know how we think we're going to vote. So, oh, Ms. Petrie. Um, uh, can we ask Mr. Fletcher to come up for some questions, yes. please? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. For the record, I'm Joel Fletcher, Assistant State's Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Thank Fletcher. You. Again, this for the is record. <laughs> this is mostly for the uh, public record uh, because I I had asked some of these questions of you on uh, aside, but I do want them on the record. Um, based on my understanding of the circuit court decision on the other RLA case that went to the circuit court. The facts pertaining that, to that case are not parallel facts as we read the Jones case. Am I accurate in my understanding? Yes. In the Gertis case, there was no question that crop dusting was the exclusive use of the RLA. Uh, the only issue was whether crop dusting was an agricultural purpose. Here, there is an issue as to whether crop dusting is the exclusive use of the RLA. It's my understanding from uh, my review of the record so far that there is testimony about emergency uses of the RLA, which may be laudable, but is not agricultural. Uh, there, there was some suggestion that the types of plant on the property are inconsistent with the agricultural use. There was testimony that, the fly, that flying was the petitioner's hobby and that the planes were purchased as an investment. Now, I have had a chance to speak with Mr. Singleton. He's a capable attorney, and if this went to court, he may well win an argument that this, isn't, that this RLA is, is that, the, that the agricultural use of this RLA is the principal use of the land. I cannot tell you that there's no legal risk here. I can tell you that this is distinguishable from the Gertis case. All right. And my second question. As I read the statute on RLAs, it is my understanding that an RLA does not run with the land, that if and when this property is sold, there is no guarantee that there will be certification from the state. The new owner would have to go through a process to get this landing strip approved. Am I, is my understanding correct? Are you, are you talking about the application process with the FA, or I'm sorry, with the, the Department of Transportation? Right, because some people have said, oh, this will run with the land. I went and read the statute. That is not my understanding of the of the statute, and I just want a clarification of my understanding. To be uh, to be perfectly honest, that's not a, a question I am uh, I can be certain about. But I believe you are correct that the new owner would have to apply again with the Department of Transportation. Okay. Uh, my third question has to do with uh, planning law and in relationship to first use of area. In other words. There are residents and housing in that area before the petition uh, for an RLA and a change of zoning from CR to AG-1. And as I understand and read the documents, the landing strip is 100 feet from the boundary of one of the properties and 140 feet from the actual housing unit. That is closer than the landing strip is to the hangar. Um, my understanding of planning law is when there has been a first use in an instance um, changing the zoning to accommodate a use that did not fall within the original zoning is not appropriate. Um. There are, there's a general concept in planning law of coming to the nuisance that, that you can't complain to, uh, about a, a situation that you came to. There's general, uh, there's something more specific to zoning. Uh, well, the LaSalle factors that we're all familiar with typically speak in terms of the, the existing use of the land, but these are broad principles and it's kind of hard to, to apply those broad principles. I mean, you can't just apply them reflexively in any, con in, 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 in any context. I think you're right. Generally, you have an uphill battle when you're, when you're bringing a new use to, a new different use to an area. Okay. 
And then my last question, you may or may not be able to answer. We have been, I mean, I haven't had time to study all that we were presented on the green sheets, but I'm looking at a summary of traffic comparisons and it's apples and oranges. Airplanes are dangerous. Highway noise is not dangerous. It may be very irritating when your windows are open. Is there anything in planning law or any cases in planning law that uh, we can draw on in relationship to this apples and oranges uh, comparison? To, to be to be honest, I can't really respond to much of anything in this document. It was given to because me a few minutes before the before right. the hearing. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Kurtz. Thank you. Uh, I have a few questions that came up, uh, particularly on this variance about having just three landings, four land. We have no way to enforce, even if this was passed through back to the ZB and the ZB. Oh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna follow your edict here that, that we're only going to land three planes a week. Uh, there's no way that we can enforce that if it's violated. There's no way that if five planes or 10 planes or 20 planes land there and somebody comes to us and says, well, they're landing 20, what are we going to do? Uh, we really have honestly no way to enforce that. Uh, also, another question is looking at those maps. The front end of this uh, landing strip actually butts against 130 where all these trucks and cars go by. And that certainly is a safety uh, issue for me. Uh, you're going to land a, a plane. <coughs> it's got to come in pretty close to the edge of that. But any, any miscalculation, as was in that accident that took place just recently, where it hit the edge of, a, <coughs> of, the, of the embankment and crashed in New York, uh, could very well happen if he misjudges or in a, in a cloudy or, or rainy day, comes down and hits one of those trucks going by. Uh, now, that may never happen, but why take a chance? So uh, I will support the Z, and again, the ZBA, I mean, the stack of information that the ZBA goes it's through, it's down there, it's and I wouldn't want John to hurt himself by picking it up again. Uh, but it's massive. The, the, the findings of fact were obvious. And so uh, unless there, there's a compelling reason, and I don't see it, uh, I'm going to support the ZBA's uh, conclusion. Uh, that this should be denied. Uh, Ms. Berkson, uh, microphone, microphone, please. I'm concerned by the fact that public safety is exempted in all his new conditions. He'll only do this and only do that except for public safety. He could become a paid agent of sheriff's departments or anything else. The public safety use could become very large. And that's not, that's, he has a freebie on that in his extra conditions. So I, too, will support this. Uh, any further? Mr. Schrader. <clears throat> Just a comment on RLAs. And, and having 10 years of experience on Zoning Board of Appeals in this county, I can only remember just a couple, I believe. Uh, one, actually, RLA, it's granted, was within an eighth of a mile of my father's house. And the intent, for the most part, um, was basically for someone with a hobby, for um, someone that was an enthusiast, and that usually meant that it was very low usage. Um, it, it was basically used for the area that that was located in, generally Ag-1 zoning areas. So if there was any crop dusting to be done, it was seasonal. And basically, probably a, at the most, a two-month window. So the, 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 <clears throat> the excessive use would come in that two-month window. What concerns me is that we're potentially trying to expand, I'm not saying we are, but petitioners potentially trying to expand, I think, the original intent of the RLA. You can make the argument that it's generic enough that you can do this, but the original intent was not for that. Um, and I, I can't see 
that agriculture in any way is principal to this RLA in any point at all, and that's the point that needs to be made. And with that, I'll support the resolution. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of the resolution as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, moving on then to item 10 for information only, the proposed rule by, excuse me, Office of the State Fire Marshal to require fire sprinkler systems installed in all new single family dwellings, duplexes, and existing assembly occupancies, occupancies 100 or more people within five years. Um, this proposed rule has been pulled by the State Fire Marshal. Um, I did have, as I mentioned previous, um, I saw Mr. Max Mitchell, um, another board member, um, who made the comment that he would like to see us, I realize this is just for information only, but he would like to see us go ahead and pass a resolution um, opposing this so that when and if this ever comes before us again, we're already on record as being opposed. And uh, well, that can happen in the future. We can't do that tonight. Uh, but uh, Mr. Mitchell also contacted me as well when this was up for about a half hour. I mean, this, this was the fastest thing I've ever seen happen. I got an email saying they want to put sprinklers in every building and every private home, uh, and, and everything hit the fan within about a half hour. And I was getting emails and phone calls from all over. <clears throat> That's why we need the sprinklers. <laughs> and uh, the next thing I know, uh, obviously, uh, that's, uh, Senator Cullerton got into the act pretty quick, and all of a sudden, the fire marshal said, oops, I think I made a boo-boo here, <laughs> and he pulled that pretty quickly. Uh, I honestly don't believe that uh, we should have sprinklers in private homes unless the private homeowner decides to put a sprinkler system in. And to mandate that, in older buildings and in other areas that are grandfathered also into this thing should, in my mind, it was ill-prepared ill at this point. I know safety is very important. Fire is, is deadly. I've had personal experience with my wife's very, very, our very, very, very close friend's daughter who died in a college dorm fire. Um, she was a beautiful young lady and we still mourn her today. Uh, but I, I think this was a little bit ill-prepared, and we were unprepared to hear this. He, he just sort of sprung it on, on this committee. So uh, I, I, would, I would move forward if, uh, if the board so desires uh, next month or the month after to have a resolution, uh, if this ever comes back. Uh, I don't think we have to preempt it. Um, but if, if this does come back, then we, we should take action. Ms. Burson. I'd like to ask every woman who has ever set off her smoker alarm in the kitchen, imagine the damage <laughs> if it happen? turned off all your oh, sprinklers. Oh, yeah, oh, not, not a woman, or him. <laughs> him. Oh, okay. It wasn't her. Uh, I mean, <laughs> imagine the cost of insuring oh. against that damage. Right. And it's ridiculous. Uh, any any further discussion? I, I, oh, Mr. Schrader. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care, Miss Petrie, whoever. Well, uh, two points. I I have a great deal of trouble um, um, supporting a resolution when we don't know how it might indeed play itself out. So I couldn't support it from that at this point in time. Second, uh, I do agree that uh, this was. Uh, maybe not as constructively thought out as possible. I don't disagree with the concept that we need to be moving to more safety within single dwellings at all. Ms. Bergson notwithstanding and her, her grease in the kitchen. However, I think if we really do step back and start calculating the externalities of cost 
in relationship to insurance, which comes out to all of us in insurance costs, then maybe we shouldn't immediately jump up and down as Senator Cullerton did and say, no, we can't do this, but maybe we should say, gee, this isn't a bad idea, and maybe there's a three-pronged plan of incrementally getting something moving forward. So. Mr. Schrader. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'd be opposed to, I, you know, I'd be opposed to set up a resolution opposing something that's not there right now. Right. I, I, I know where Max is coming from, and I appreciate that, but I, I, I don't think, uh, it, obviously in the state government, it's a moot point. So I, I don't know what they would think if we send a resolution saying, hey, don't do this, when they said they're not going to do it. So, and, and with this kind of stuff, yeah, I just follow the money because I I just bet there's somebody that's got a relative or maybe themselves and in, in Springfield, Chicago that does piping or or some type of sell sprinklers. <coughs> sell sprinklers or somebody <laughs> says, I got this idea. Hey, well, we require this and figuring they're gonna make a pot of money. It's usually how legislation is cast in Chicago for Springfield. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, we will move on then to monthly reports. We have two to approve and place on file, the May 2013 and June 2013. Moved by Mr. Kurt, seconded by Ms. Berkson. Any additions or corrections, Ms. Petrie? For the public record, my colleague to the right just sent me a post-it telling me to be sure I look at page 164, and that is because I have been asking as part of this uh, table that gets presented monthly to give us the information related to best prime farmland conversion, and it is started, and I really appreciate this from Mr. Hall. Thank you very much. And, it, Mr. and it's nice to see zeros. No conversion of best prime farmland on this report in June. And I hope that stays that way for a long time. One acre. One acre. I see the one acre. I but don't handle one that's acre. the first acre this year. So. Uh, but that's incremental. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor of receiving and placing these on file, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, is there any other business? Uh, there is no chair's report, so move on to designation of items to be placed on consent agenda. We have seven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seven B, C, um, and item nine. And that's all. Um, as regular motion for adjournment would be moved by Mr. Kurtz, second, second by Ms. Berkson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.